Okay, so let me open the Google Sheet where people have already uh, have uh, question answers. We will take that question answers first, and after that, if time permits, we will have a open uh, live question answers session as well. Cool. So coming sharing the screen with you guys. Okay, so today is thirtieth. Um, Kirti Sood has asked two questions. Uh, are you able to see it, sir? How to increase online patients and how to do effective digital marketing? Okay, wonderful, nice question. There, there is nothing like online patients. How to increase online means she wants to understand how they can increase the flow by online marketing, digital marketing. That is what she wants. Uh, yes. Good. So, so nice question. I think everyone has this problem. Everything everyone is is looking for the answers. Yeah. So basically, let me answer it in a way that. We all understand. See, basically, online and uh, online marketing or digital marketing, whatever you call it, it is not for solely for the patients. It is actually for building a brand, and it is a methodology which we had time and again discussed. That there is a digital ecosystem altogether, and you have to influence the people by giving them good content, as well as uh, from time to time you should update yourself and your uh, new offers which are there. It should be available in your uh, media. And at the same time, you should be projecting what good things you are doing. Basically, it is a trust which develops, and over a period of time, if it multiplies and it snowballs, basically, it is not only the you. It is not as simple as one plus one is two. It is a much different way. But if one once the whole ecosystem is working in a tandem, it gives you good results. Right. So as uh, Pranav sir is, is is saying, that is what exactly uh, is the core of it. um first we don't understand the digital marketing and for that we have made the module so if kirti dr kirti is listening please go through the module the of marketing branding because say saying is very easy okay digital marketing okay let's do a campaign and everything if you don't understand the rules of game then how will play the game you don't understand the basic foundation of all our digital marketing or itself the business itself and um, as as we have already uh, said many times that sadly in our whole uh, education system we have never taught about this thing right business or what are the value what are the customer values and a lot of sales marketing we have never taught about it so go through the module marketing branding wala module you it will give you a, a foundation of business marketing and then the digital marketing then you will understand how you can actually use uh, digital marketing for your benefit now digital marketing is not some kind of magic wand that needs to be another uh, mindset that you should be uh, having because if you if any agency of anybody is coming um, saying that uh, i can do this i can have 50 leads and i have 100 leads per month and give me 10 20000 rupees that means uh, it is not a serious enough okay i can also or anybody can also generate leads for you okay on a on a google sheet okay you will see okay my 50 50 leads but how many of them are converting nobody knows so his task will be like converting in uh, giving you random leads which which i can give you like database of 1000 people without any cost without any digital marketing so there is no there is no uh, authenticity of that kind of data so so to understand that to get uh, deep into uh, into this this thing is is to un, is to feel that digital marketing also takes time and we we need to have a a foundation over which everything will be built and for that we have told you that the digital infrastructure starting from your website then making it active website then all the social media handles and then uh, you have uh, above that you have a consistent content creation and content creation is not about sending really uh, this festival post and all random post one post this is not the the objective is how you engage with your target market and um, and there you should understand who is your target market okay that needs to be very very clearly un understood otherwise it will be random thing uh, you are generating uh, you are you are giving content to everybody and you are not targeting then no one is going to follow you we don't want to be a, a, like a, every a general doctor for everyone we need to be a very specific if you have a niche target only niche market and then step by step develop content maybe once a week twice a week only but valuable content where people are engaged enough and once it is it, this these things are done uh, search engine optimization of on your on your uh, website and other things are done 
then you can run a paid campaign and then you will get some results so that needs to be done and again google my business profile reviews all those things has to come together so please please go through the module and the first webinar and the webinar I, I we have told about the seven um, touch points and how the seven stages of of digital marketing how do digital ecosystem works those those things together with what the module uh, is is there in the branding that will give you the full confidence to go all, all out spend on digital marketing okay spend on the other every time we are thinking of expenditure 10 12 20000 this will not make an impact you have to increase your budget initially to to make an impact and slowly uh, get a conversion so so i i see in this way if i can spend x amount i can get uh, 2x amount or 3x or 4x then it is an investment not a, not an expenditure so my focus should be if i spend 20000 40000 a month if i can get two client who can pay me 80000 work done okay and all other things will be bonus so it is a mindset change as well as a skill set if you do do it properly in the both direction and be connected to this this uh, this world uh, you will learn a lot of uh, tricks tips uh, how to get all those things another important misconception is that you are very smart and you can fool the people by putting out any content what you want to no 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 it's not possible. you are actually now the people are very very smart they also understand your genuinity and the content should be adding value to their life yeah that is very important then only they'll be engaged and and uh, the 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 easiest trick is uh, see youtube is is the major play in this area um young generation young uh, people can also be on instagram uh, instagram is also growing and and facebook facebook is always there will be there uh, youtube but youtube is is the major play okay the same content can once you you put on youtube means video content okay once you shoot a video uh, you can put it on your web website you can put it on a facebook you can put on youtube on insta and, and you can have a shorts and reels by cutting it editing it and uh, what the the very important uh, trick, trick is will be that uh, you choose or you select one doctor or some doc or somebody who in your space who is uh, influencer who has already have few thousand a subscriber a followership of good, good people and see out of his video or her video which video is working okay so that video is a click which is just click with the public on the same topic in the similar ma manner with the same keyword you make your own content okay that is the best way to start best way to start because in otherwise you will have 100 topics in your mind and you will go in a sequential way and that will you will say only one subscriber to subscriber adding this is the best way of doing it search in your domain who is doing good 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 content out of then maximum views in which videos make a list and make your content give give the similar headlines similar keywords similar description because this this is already worked so let let youtube algorithm uh, feel the same thing that yes you are doing the right stuff and this kind of content is already popular so it will push push to the more people okay is it right is it good good uh, trick okay uh, this is this is a trick which i just uh, came uh, to know uh, some days ago when i was talking to uh, some some uh, digital marketer uh, kind of people who are deep into this this thing so uh, i want to just want to came up and i just uh, sharing with you okay try it it will help you Prabhat Kumar is asking how to apply for hospital name. Okay. Uh, so hospital name, one, once you see, so you have to decide two things in hospital name, you know, when you are starting in hospital, one is your legal in, entity name. Okay. So legal entity is the company, maybe your LLP or private limited or what, what, what is the kind of uh, entity you are doing? And then you have in a hospital. So X, Y, Z hospital, private limited. That will be the your and legal entity, and within that legal entity, you can have any uh, brand name for your hospital. So uh, it can be same or it can be different. It doesn't matter. So once uh, once that is done, and the brand name you will choose according to the trademark and copyright. Uh, you go to the website MCA website and see if it is uh, it is available for you to register for it. Okay. So let me show that also how you go and search for it. You can take a help of CA if you are not very well versed with it. 
but this will be helping you yeah yeah but it is it is easy to search there is nothing rocket science here and uh, you will uh, depending on ca you, they will be giving you just few option you can go and search for it so example so if you mci 21 if you do that search it will give you a few topics ministry of corporate affairs view a company and llp master data okay so go to this view or check company name this is also there this is also i use normally i use this one so you can write like for example if uh, i want uh, okay so here it is already people who uh, have registered for it so here company and uh, you can check the data when we go to the um, services check company name Now, if if I have uh, let's say rainbow, hospitals. I don't know why is government website. What can be done? <laughs> see if you go to search it will show you yeah so rainbow hospital limited is already registered okay so in this way you can check trademark you can check domain okay so everything is there in the one you can check llp name you can check the trademark you can check the domain name as well, as well if it's available for you or not so this this uh, page will be much very very useful for you uh, we'll put the link here save this link it will helpful for finding the link. so uh, below the video also i will put it another important thing is whenever you are selecting the name you see the target population which is you are addressing or the target population from where patient is coming so in a rural setup or a semi-urban setup yeah. don't put a very high-fi english name which doesn't understand people cannot pronounce it absolutely Something which should be easily you know, repeatable easily rememberable as well as it has authenticity should be kept Again, every, everything is decided on your target market. Even yeah. in the posh locality, if you are catering to uh, lower middle class, then have that kind of regional language name. If you are having inspirational or high end, then you can have uh, English and foreign words here and there just to make it very unique. Okay. So, uh, Amit, Dr. Amit is asking how to scale up uh, into chain of physio clinic. A problem area is doctor management and HR. How to how to scale up chain of physio clinic? Okay, physio clinic uh, need whenever there is a there is a scaling scaling up that means you are going with the branches and franchise model. Okay. Yeah. So that means um, your first couple of uh, branches should be run by you. That is the first thing. Second thing is you developing. Very strict SOP checklist and guidelines. Right. Once you have SOP uh, checklist guidelines system in place, then you can replicate the into other branches, other franchising. And above that, once that is the operational thing, then you have to develop a business model, a win-win business model. So uh, if you if your first or second uh, physio center is is profitable. And you can share that same physical uh, financials uh, with the with the upcoming doctor or other new people, uh, or you you can also have your own training kind of setup where you train people in your first two setup and then uh, help them establish business their business in in their own hometown. They can become your uh, franchisee owner. So it's very good uh, method of developing relationship with people who are you you are giving a franchisee to one first you train them. Tell them the whole business model, make them work for a three months in six months in your setup, and then give them an offer to franchisee. So they will give you a uh, training fees. Uh, and when you give them a business opportunity, uh, they will also give you a franchisee fee. So that is a fantastic way of doing it. Um, once that, that is that, that is done, then only you, you will be able to scale it up. So and foundation is, is to be taken care. Doctor management and HR, HR again uh, with the system process, everything uh, taken into care and doctor's management. Uh, again, if it is a win-win situation for everyone, 
people will retain there people will will be there only thing that you need to make a legal document good enough uh, so that people don't run away in a, in few months or six months after after investing so if they have skin in the game for both profit and loss people will stick there basically there will be two things which you have to address first is what is it, it for me and that person will ask him mujhe kya milega so that should be ensured that you are doing justice to him right now and second thing is you should show him the vision for future if you show him that there is growth and there is future is good that is when the people will stick to you yeah and uh, try to not to copy paste uh, the existing models come up with your own unique model otherwise if you do the copy copy paste then the 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 growth will be limited and uh, people can crack your model so if you have some something unique to offer uh, replicate that that will help okay dr miki is asking how how does a company like pristine get an insurance done okay as a pristine is aggregator who get patient in its name to other hospitals hmm now in the insurance company uh, in the insurance company the other hospital must be registered with license not pristine but the patient is of pristine how does it work i am asking i am also doing something like this my company is aggregator that will uh, get patients uh, to another clinic and hospital uh, how will a uh, company patient claim insurance it is a startup more help would be much appreciated okay pristine is actually an aggregator hmm. but as far as uh, we know that the rules and the regulations of the operating place or the hospital because patient insurance company are not going to pay to the doctor directly it is going to pay to the organization where it has been done work has been done it is to the hospital it pays correct see there are two two things here one is what pristine do they will have uh, they they have their own lead capturing funnel okay so they capture a uh, patient before you capture them right so they capture patient and tell them that you need this kind of surgery or patient come with uh, to them that i need this kind of surgery now they will they have their own partners um, hospitals or nursing home where uh, ot or operation theater is is not utilized to the full capacity so what they will say to the hospital or the nursing home is that as a owner you you are not using your ot or the resources uh, let it, let us uh, we do we do the hard work you give us on a rent uh, premises on a rent on on hourly basis and we will give you this much amount of money and you don't need uh, we don't need your staff you don't need your doctors our people will come uh, they will do the surgery and they will go and the post op you take care so you will earn from the post post op also and we will give you a revenue so that is how they convince the people now as far as insurance is concerned Insur- insurance will be the the premises the physical premises where the doctor is 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 there where the ot where the operation happen that is the place where insurance company will give the money because the filing system will be of that uh, that company okay so they come they go and have a very very deep level of legal contract with the people so you have to go and convince each and every hospitals and talk to them and make an a standard uh legal document where it it specify everything that how the filing system be done how would the cashless facility happens and all all of the things so the you have to go talk or your your bd person have to go and talk and uh, uh, convince the yeah. hospital to uh, come on board with you okay now uh the the easiest way for you is get a find a partner get a find a doctor or hospital who is already working with pristine and look into their legal contract that is a way to do do it otherwise nobody will be able to give you uh, the real uh, legal clauses that happens there because we have not seen pristine uh, contract nobody here has seen is in it so find a find a place or find a doctor or find a hospital which who is working with pristine and then see the legal document if possible that will give you a much clarity okay now coming to the second part of it um, all agency agencies and even the mci nmc all all the bodies statutory bodies has actually given in a reply to an rti that pristine <coughs> pristine practo uh, just dial all other platforms are are not allowed or you are not allowed to use their services okay so if we if you see from a legally point of view 
uh, pristine and all the all other are are still in a gray area still in gray area so if you are in a startup please look look uh, into that area that that space also because this is a very regulated space one guideline here and there uh, will destroy the whole business model so so go through the guidelines very 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 deep understand them and then find finally uh, make your offer pristine again it's a unicorn they have a lot of money a lot of influential people uh, they are not yet hit but all the association of doctors i have seen a lot of association have given in, in in return advisory to all their members not to work with pristine or practo there is a similar mo model has been run by practo as well so share they, those documents uh, below this video also yeah so please please understand if if uh, that that if that happens suddenly the whole business will collapse so have this this as a threat so when you do a business model you always go with a swot analysis right a strength weakness opportunity threat in a threat please put this as a big big threat it can happen any time maybe it can turn around in a positive way some guidelines come in a positive way that i don't know but this is a very very genuine threat to your business model so take into consideration okay i hope we are able to answer you okay satupra pal is asking i completed my internship in the month of jan especially after being part of this academy uh, okay just you can select e and yep. all the tables So I've completed my internship, especially uh, being part of this. Again, I love the idea of being Dr. Penner. Very good. I realized that sooner or later, I would like to have my own clinic. Oh, very good. So realization has happened. Now, question is, I am most concerned is whether I should focus on preparing on pursuing MD or setting up of your own clinic. Are there any alternative like doing fellowship internship that might help at this point? Dr. Penner can answer it. Very, very common question. So yeah. many people ask us, ki, whether you should go or plunge in the market or you should do the higher studies. Correct. The answer to that is you should believe your conscious. You should trust your conscious and whatever you want to pursue in life. See, it is not that business will give you all the happiness or not the degree will give you all the happiness, but for your aim, for your satisfaction, if you want to, if you're passionate about one branch, you want to become a super specialist or a specialist, you should definitely pursue for your study. But if you just want to, your aim is to start a hospital and make it in a business model, it is not required. I mean, even non-MBS or other people are also having their own setups. So it is like no degree is required for being an entrepreneur. But at the same time, you have to have the knowledge of the entrepreneurial stuff as well as the market. So basically, if you want to pursue higher studies for your self-goal, for your achievements, for your future progress, then pursue it. Otherwise, for being an entrepreneur, an MBBS is good enough. Correct. So just to add a few more points is that, uh, of course, doing a higher degree will help. MD, MS, uh, all this degree uh, will help, help you in a longer, a longer run. That is undisputed. Otherwise, why would be it so graceful? So point is, it is it will help you in longer run, whether in, in your career or in your uh, business, it will help. Now, having said that, you should understand what is at a stake, how many years of, of uh, hard work you are able to give into. Uh, are you are you that kind of academic person who want to pursue higher education? Do not go by the outside influence. Hard mentality. Go with the, your internal uh, wiring. Well, what, what you like in MBBS during MBBS day. And after that, uh, are you, are you able to sustain with the, with the academic rigor? Do you enjoy it? Because afterward in MD and MS, it will be more, much more, right? So you have to analyze yourself, uh, that, uh, after a few years, will I be uh, doing, um, or uh, medical line, like mean, uh, you are seeing patient, you are, you are consulting patient, or you will be in moving into a management role and where you're operating, or you're just seeing the, med the medical setup and you're generating a lot of revenue and employing a lot of people. So what kind of uh, role you are looking in your, for you in the future? So if you're looking, uh, for example, after five, six years, you will be managing a hospital and doing that kind of stuff and having your own setup, employing a lot of people, then I don't think, uh, MSMD 
is required not like you do not have to put uh, hard work there but if you feel that you will be the brand name you will be pushing uh, under your brand everything will be pushed your hospital will run after your name then your higher education will be very very critical for you because then the brand names work and again uh, it also de depends on your geographical location demographic all other factors your financial condition what your parents situations all of those things are also taken into consideration so do not go just because uh, everyone else is going for pg preparation and they want to do it um, don't they, there is uh, not the right way of doing it you you have to you have to search uh, introspect you have to take a call on your own because see this is an important decision yeah you should not do it because somebody told you to do it or you, he told or father told, told that go for higher studies yeah. it should be your conscious call whatever you are doing and both the ways are right i mean there is no wrong right or wrong about it yeah. both the ways are right and there are successes in both the ways and failures in both the ways there is a uh, there is a book call uh, find your why read it read it through okay let me just give you a link um this will help you uh, understanding why a person should do any why why a person should take any decision okay whenever such a decision point comes in your life and if you see in retrospect you should always think that that decision was correct at that time point of time and you should not fear in making the, these decisions also because if you are taking a decision right now you might think that three four years down the line you might say that okay why did i think like that but in that point of time that was the best decision yep start with the why yeah this is called start with the why start with the why how great leader inspire everyone to take action by simon sinek i will give you a link in the chat box this is very nice book to uh, it will give you a lot of clarity because whatever we do we should be able to find why otherwise uh, things become so stressful in our life that we are not able to sustain it and that is why the stress happen if you are not uh, doing the things according to your inner self that is why the stress happen so to align your cause and why with your work that you are doing this is a book okay in amazon 150 rupees i want i uh, 250 rupees buy it everyone can buy it uh, because it's it's talk about the in inspiration it's talk about the um, the leadership and uh, it is very important book for leadership also yeah yes uh, sadurpat do it also means i will have to think further yes you have to because not further you just think inside okay um go to some place two three days break from all digital thing all your uh, external influences uh, talk to yourself write diary go in uh, inner just see your past patterns okay see your past patterns or what 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 has excited you most why do you do not like that class or uh, why you are not going um, or in uh, like whether you are introvert or extrovert with your friends on family so all, you just see yourself uh, understand yourself first and see your past behavior see that uh, whether it is like you go not going to the pg uh, is it a way of you uh, flying Finding away from something from a challenge okay yeah. uh, is it is it the finding the easy busy way is your pattern just just giving you a thought okay just throwing you all those things uh, which is possible so see you see your thoughts uh, whether you you are always uh, uh, going for an easy way Uh, right now you might be saying that okay uh, going in a startup or doing your own setup is a easier way rather than a pg right right now but after afterwards you struggle you will see the struggle and you will see oh, you will find okay this is not good let me do something else so so understand wh why you are doing what you are doing uh, and in your your whole uh, inner self and then only take decision it is this will be not be answered by anybody else but by you because there are different set of challenges in both of them absolutely no no space is uh, is indifferent to the challenge there is challenges everywhere uh, startup or your own setup is a bigger challenge you need a bigger why for you, for it okay <laughs> you're doing a job job and uh, uh, being in a consulting some some hospital it's a easier easier thing when you have your own setup uh, it's a bigger task it's a bigger challenge and that why of you why you are doing it it's got to be very very strong that is why you get motivated to work so hard okay okay 
Dr. Kewal is saying basically I'm from Gujarat. Um, I am a neurosurgeon currently working in teaching institute. My question is where to settle in as a neurosurgeon in the major cities or the periphery, how to switch from the institute to private. Okay. Yeah. Can you see the question again once again? Okay. So neurosurgery primarily requires a lot of allied support. The neurologist from uh, other, uh, basically, uh, there are two types of patients which are coming in neurosurgery. One is the trauma, and second is the old age or you know some other metabolic and other disorders. Basically, neurosurgery is required, as you must be knowing, that that is required in these two subset of patients. And uh, neurosurgery is a high technically demanding and more intense thing. So it is better to start in a city or a bigger setup because you will get support everywhere and you will get the patient. You can bail out your patient if there is a problem. Because as a whole, you don't have to do just the neurosurgery. It is the whole patient which you have to manage and it should be sent home. Basically, you get the allied branches help much easily in the uh, city. And if it is possible, then you have you should have a neurologist in your team. Because neurologist and neurosurgeon, they work in tandem. Whenever there is a problem in a neurological case, these two people, just like heart, in heart, there is a heart team approach. Cardiologist and cardiac surgeon work in tandem. Similarly, neurology and neurosurgeons work in tandem. So... It is better to start in a city and how to start it from an institute to a private. First, you make a network and like-minded people who are actually wanting to start a venture with you. Make a team, make up, find out people who are actually of your kind of mindset and then you find a place to start. But definitely not in a village or a small setup. Right. In villages, village or small city, uh, multi-speciality uh, works. If you are really focus on one uh, specialty, then Metro will work. And again, it comes boils down to your uh, internal wiring, because how do you connect with the people? What kind of people you are comfortable with? Are you comfortable with the middle class people or the people from the periphery? Uh, do not think from like where I can earn. You can earn anywhere. Okay. Let, let, let's see this in this format. Earning opportunities is the same everywhere. So what is the differentiating factor? How do you connect with the people to whom you can connect? You can connect with the like-minded people or people like you who are similar to you. Right? Uh, so uh, if you're comfortable with the rural people, bingo, perif periphery, go to the places where you can connect, have a lower price range and uh, start generating volumes. That is one way. If you, if you are comfortable with talking in English and talking with the people who are in the, from higher, uh, higher section of society, then in the metros. Right. So it, it's again boils down how comfortable you are and how you can connect with people because connection is what matters uh, in the long run uh, if you want to run a successful clinic or setup. Okay. Okay. Dr. Shashang is asking that uh, is MB and uh, Dr. Pranav aapse pucha hai ki is MBBS is not enough or MBBS doctors are not uh, capable enough to run an hospital in a current situation. Is it true? MBBS doctor can open a hospital. But then to run it, you have to have a specialist and uh, you, can, you can always have a small clinic or a small uh, small indoor setup. But for a proper proper management in a city like Indore, you need a specialist also. You need specialist help. Whether they are on your payroll, whether they are in a partnership, whether they are uh, partners with, with them in your project, but they will be required. Mm. So... So saying in this way that uh, MBBS doctor can, uh, of course, open a hospital and it can run, but independently, they cannot be profitable. They may not be profitable. So you need a supporting uh, people who are of higher education or specialization. Uh, but MBBS is good enough to uh, understand start, and understand. start run operations, uh, see everything. Uh, it is going enough. Multiple, uh, multiple branches can be open up uh, all, all the all the traits of entrepreneur, it can be there, right? So that MBBS is, is good enough. Uh, nothing wrong in it. Only thing that you you have to inspire people to come to your clinic of MS and MD and join you. And then you run a setup. So that leadership quality you have to build. Otherwise, MBBS is good enough to run an hospital. Dr. Cable, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, let me share the... Now, this question is quite long. I think uh, Jamin Patel, uh, sir, you can 
uh, give him a reply by mail because it is very specific to lot of things are there set of questions there are three set of questions yeah so three set of questions so you can uh, give uh, each question reply in a mail okay so let us go a little below dr gauri shankar is asking how to improve uh, my hospital <laughs> you can improve your hospital by finding out what is wrong and getting what it. is wrong in it Correct. the first thing is what is wrong with with it that needs to be find well, found out okay so that is very much needed uh so the, do it on a regular basis i mean yeah. not not taking uh, taking in a lighter way the audit and the system uh, you know the system audit should be done to the hospital every six monthly it find out what is wrong what you are not doing correctly where there are loopholes where there are leakages and you should rectify it, rectify it because it is a live organization it is not like a uh, you know museum or it is not like a monument it is like a people are constantly coming in getting treated and each each patient is different there's different set of challenges they are going to have different different problems and their solutions are also cannot be tailor made so basically you have to do the audit of the system every 6 months and find out the questions find out the answers and it is a good idea to go for some accreditation like nabh entry level that will help you make the sops and checklist in a better format and run the system in a much better way so so that is rightly said and um, if not 6 months at least uh, yearly yearly you can have audits which we call as a 3p audits okay uh, people po- policy and practice okay people policy and practice if you do uh, 3p audits by an external agency it will give you a very good uh, understanding what is wrong what is happening wrong with you okay wrong in in your setup which which area needs a uh, change oh, and uh, it is uh, important for for any organization Uh, to have a third point, third party view. Otherwise, you, if sitting inside, you will not be able to understand what is happening. And uh, once uh, we are start, acha, we don't understand the expenses and revenue and all those things. All that, that thing, the 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 setup is running. It's okay. I am earning enough. Uh, so in this, in that way, in that scenario, lot of doctors and lot of uh, doctor planners do not go for any kind of audit for five ten years. and the setup is just rotting from inside and so if you are really serious about it uh, please go uh, at least this this audit once uh, uh, in a once in a year at that during the financial year before the financial year uh, uh, arrange for a for a consultant or internal auditor kind of people who can audit your system and give you a suggestion that these are the things which you are need to be corrected and if you do it properly for first 3 years it will it will it will be a systemized way and it will help you in a long way 3p audits okay 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 so lakshmi narasimha rai is asking government is monitoring the number of lscs is it agreeable government basically monitoring- government is not only uh, monitoring the lscs it is monitoring all the surgeries and all the data because the database is going to be created at national level so there is nothing to be agreeable or not agreeable in it we have to form a system in a country and this data is going to be useful for further studies and further research so you don't have an option okay so he is asking whether whether to agree with or not but if government is asking you to go give it and under uh, ce act or state ce act uh, all this information will be given given to the master data right yeah so there is no question of for you to Uh, agree or not agree, you have to go give it. Okay, so Doctor Archana Messi is asking, do you think it is good practice to offer referral to local doctor and nurses? Okay, good practice, not a bad practice or a bad practice. practice. Okay, okay. See, basically, if you can do without it, you can do it. Hello. If you are not able to do without it, you will have to live with it. It is basically it is a mindset game, but it has not been. Correctly addressed by Indian Medical Council, and everything cannot be you know, understood to take it as a negative way only, right? So, uh, legally saying and morally saying everything from the top, it is said that no, this commission should not be given. Uh, this should not not be dealt in this way. Uh, but when you when you see in the, pra- in the practicality of it, um, I think it is justifiable. uh to give anybody who is giving you lead okay 
from a business perspective okay it should not be unethical it should not be like uh, a patient doesn't need it and they are forcing them to come to you that is wrong so that is what i'm saying do the ethical business practice uh, find people who are ethical enough they are not just a, uh, uh, just people who are just watch, uh, watching for the patient and and just uh, giving you for for the sake of it people who are genuinely referring you are right patients people who actually need need you your services giving a portion of of the of the of your revenue to the people who are giving you it's not a wrong thing it, and if you want to really provide avoid that you make such a brand for yourself and influence such a way so that automatically patient comes to you yeah that is a another way of looking at it correct so next the first uh, uh, when you start your uh, services it will not be possible for you to run away from this kind of uh, things you have to rely on the networks which feeds you right they, these are the channels which feeds you so that you have to rely it and slowly you build your brand such a strong brand that people uh, directly come to you so when you, so you also have an unlimited capacity to see pe- uh, people right if if you are already occupied by your own leads you will not be able to see the people who are referred right then you are safe from those those people so in, instead of thinking that it is right or wrong and society will change or not build your brand that is what we are always telling build fo- focus on your brand value build your brand for longer longer term invest your brand in a brand brand making how many people have a budget allocation for branding how many people think about that okay 1% 2% 5% what is your vision for brand brand building activity okay just under just make that that portion from your uh, expenses that this much will be go, go uh, going to brand activity every year so every year just like a mutual fund or stock market you invest something this is this is a this is a lifetime branding you do it so invest 5% of your revenue uh, into brand ac- branding activity that for a longer uh, time 5 to 10 years it will be a very very like it, it returns will be huge so please build your brand to save yourself from the cut practice okay so rahul uh, is asking uh, amenity plots details for hospital construction what does that mean amenity plots are the plots which are earmarked for specific purposes and the government is developing some particular area they okay. are the areas which are given and then they the local authority or the town planning authority mm. they decide that a hospital can be open there or not mm. it varies from state to state and city to city you see the local authorities you have to see and that is where you want to you will have to understand that which area is being opened as a amenity plots mm. whether the hospital is planned in it or not yeah pause we have we have uh, come across one or two cases where people have done it uh, they have a not so good experience uh, because uh, government like the the plot uh, attached to that plot is been given for some other purpose which is anti hospital kind of thing or not very convenient uh, to the people who are coming to hospital um, so that is a call that you have to take uh, how what what are the kind of uh, environment you are going into uh do you know what kind of uh, nearby uh, facility which are coming is it a manufacturing facility which is coming or is it a residential plot industrial industrial area what kind of so you have to do a thorough research okay it will come little little uh, less costly but uh, then you have to understand oh, oh, the environment the ecosystem which is going to develop around that uh, is there any program? training program for house okay. Patnaik is asking: Is there any training program for housekeeping staff working in OT? Housekeeping. Rather than finding a training program for the housekeeping, your senior housekeeping people should be trained by some of the nurses, and then they should be actually training the new new staff. Hmm. For such a thing like housekeeping training, you will not find many agencies doing it. Correct. But usually the agencies in which is outsourcing for housekeeping. you can keep some staff from outsourcing for some time and you can see the best practices that they are doing and then imbibe it in your setup oh uh, and gopal ji you can you are already expert in training programs you can uh, list Part down one. send uh, send us um, uh, what are what are the different tasks and housekeeping people do right uh, list them down jot it down and uh, send out over the mail let us see uh, if you build a whole internship program or training program around that it could be useful for everyone else also i don't i don't know about the any training program itself for the housekeeping because people 
feel that okay some people will come and they will learn by practice so that is how people do that but if you really uh, feel that uh, there is a need of it and uh, there is a specific skills that needs to be developed uh, list on the those jobs or those those tasks and uh, let's see if we can build a whole training program over around that abhinandan ks is asking i am an orthopedician my wi wife is about to finish pg in radiology i am working in a private hospital now we are planning to open a hospital as well as a scanner scanning center where do we start from should we open separately why to open separately it is a best good combination orthopedician and radiologist right yeah, orthopedic and radiology you actually feed the patients to one another correct and uh, if you are trying to plan a new hospital or a private setup why you are going to have double expenditure Mm. Take a one place and then you can also both of you can use it. Correct. How to do marketing of dermatology practice in tier two or tier three? Marketing of dermatology is a little different from others, but the basic principles remain the same. You have to actually reach out to the people in multiple ways. It can be physical as well as digital, and you have to build a brand. See, dermatology is changing. Okay, and uh, there is a threat and there is an opportunity. I will tell you. a um, lot of drum, dermatologist is actually going towards the cosmetic things yeah okay so and there is a real money there also so cosmetology has a real money rather than if you're just uh, having a skin disease and uh, typing tubes and tablets uh, that has a limitations um one or two people will have will have very very good um footfall other other people no will not have that kind of but if you are in cosmet cosmetic uh, thing where you are doing beautification then even tie to tie three city is is very good uh, center for that and uh, you can find a niche in that segment also okay so we we have we have found people who are doing uh, only wedding cosmetology okay very focus on only wedding uh, people so within cosmetology they have find a niche and uh, people are paying high ticket uh, to them high ticket prices to them so you can find that you can also have a hair transplant thing and um, you you can have lot of lot of uh, beautification uh, skin and beautification and especially from color enhancement enhancement in india you know what is the craze about being fair so if you work on that uh, even tie to tie three centers also works wonders because everyone wants to be fair everyone wants to good look uh, everyone wants to have a good bride and all those things even for the grooms also so you to you to find a way of finding that niche and then uh, see what other dermatologists are doing and what they are not doing and let's focus that and build a brand over it okay so that is one thing the threat is even the non derma people are doing the same thing yeah okay so there are a lot of courses people who are M, uh, bds and bms and they are doing that courses and they are doing that kind of air transplant and cosmetic thing so then you have to differentiate yourself so there is a thread also there is opportunity also so you, you do should not be going go, uh, doing only traditional dermatology practices you should include that cosme cosme uh, cosmetic uh, thing in your in your practice that will make uh, much more sense abhinandan join the program um please write to us uh, we will have a session with you uh, understand whether you are fit uh, for the program and not and then we will we can tell you that uh, uh, whether coming into the program will help you or not okay we want only uh, right people who are the right fit or right needy people who come into the uh, into this program because it is just 50 50 people in a year so only people who get advantage maximum advantage should come that is where we want to see your fit okay so write a drop a mail we will have one to one session understand your vision and see how, how we can help you apong yeah. apong is asking i am a pediatrician team working for last 10 years in a mother and child hospital which is located more densely populated north side of the town our town is expanding more towards the south side i want to open a small pediatric hospital in a four story apartment which is i own okay it has 6000 square feet a small parking area also this place is located around 3 km north of my current place of work i so i want to know if i if i can plan there and try to find a place more near to my current okay so this question is about the feasibility okay about the project report or the feasibility whether it is right location or not and uh, i don't know the town from you are belonging if it is northeast in where where in the northeast okay uh, i think you should uh, do a proper feasibility study because you are already working and if you are going for a, a small 
hospital in a four story apartment i think you need you will need a quite a good investment also so before you invest a larger amount spend something on your uh, this uh, feasible all these questions because they will do the physical survey and from that survey you will get inputs you will ask lot of other questions and lot of doubts will be clear okay so do a feasibility study and uh, send me uh, the name of your city if if possible i can connect with you some feasibility guy in your locality dr monica is asking i want to start a diagnostic center okay but with all the kickbacks to the clinical and cutthroat competition i am able to take a call how to go forward any suggestion of how to make it profitable dr apong is from dimapur nagaland okay dimapur nagaland okay we'll check from guwahati if somebody is there in a feasible feasible uh, feasibility state feasibility reports uh, section or domain uh, we'll try to connect you from there okay because it will need a proper thorough uh, understanding thorough assessment of your place of 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 geographical and what is upcoming what what is the district uh, plan for the next 5 years or 10 years and then the feasibility report will be built so please do not take any action under under unless you have a proper feasibility done by any Uh, whether by your resources or our resources, but get it done. Okay, so, so Dr. Monica's question, sir. Yeah. Once again, the same question. It is talking about cut practice and kickbacks. So the way to do is do some do start a setup which is good in good enough, and do aggressive marketing in the sense that it should be addressing to digital mm -hmm. as well as physical form, and it should be ethical. Right. That is the way to go. You don't make your networks. You have have patients from your internal network, and build your brand so that you can do away without the cut practice. Please send uh, me a uh, a mail for feasibility also. People who are looking for feasibility. Otherwise, I will forget uh, the uh, people who wanted it. want it and and just mention your city also. Please send a mail for feasibility and the mail ID I have already mentioned. Okay, Dr. Shashank. And uh, Dr. Pong, please send a mail so that I I have uh, that in my inbox. Now coming to this question, what Pranav sir has said already said is true. Um, you cannot decide whether to open a setup or not based on how much cut you will be giving to somebody. Yeah, this, this is the worst way of looking into it. So this these are the uh, practice of of the ecosystem. You will be living in the ecosystem. so that that needs to be uh, accepted or you uh, become kind of, yeah. become bigger than that and then you find uh, you set your own rules of games okay so so you cannot decide on this thing that whether cutting or cut through there will be cut through practice there was in 40s also 50s also 90s also 2000 also there is always a cut through cut through practice or competition competition is will, will always be there they will be in 2020 also 2050 also so you you cannot sit back and find like okay there is a competition i will not do anything it just i mean the competition right now is less but in 10 years it will grow much more yeah but then will be opportunity different kind of opportunity yeah. so so the competition and all those opportunity will always be there at the same time you you have to find a fit you for yourself uh, so so though those two way of thinking is is wrong now come once you are under once you confirm yourself or convince yourself that you start your setup okay now you have to find way of uh, of in, running of, it well coming or running it well now uh, people who feed into your setup will of course need some um, some money and saying it is a kickback is also not a very good way of doing it because if you real if you yourself do some marketing have expenditure spend on marketing you will also incur some cost right and somebody is also already giving you a lead then that same marketing expenditure you give back to the people what is wrong in in that until unless until unless it is not uh, ethical that's what we are saying always saying uh, if people do not need x ray and somebody is sending uh, you an x ray then you stay away from it stay away from that, that doctor that means that is not a good eth ethical practice so if you if the person who does need a Uh, a report okay. a person is sending to you you are giving a portion of revenue perfectly fine that is how the system works and slowly build your brand so that people directly come to you right and you make your own polyclinic with doctors sitting in your own setup 
they are referring to you you they are they might be on your payroll build your larger set, setup okay it's it's just the mindset that how you go uh, in your ecosystem okay doctors are ethical only <laughs> you cannot generalize anything right yeah this is not what public feel and uh, in every uh, profession Domain. every profession there are good people there are bad people there are ethical people there are non ethical people there's nothing like every doctor will, is is a god or every god every doctor is a evil it is not that the the we we, we, we our mind is always generalizing thing always generalizing thing uh, this city people are like that aisa nahi hai ki city mein aisa hi hoga is this profession is like that everyone is in that profession is may not be aggressive or may not be unethical the, the thing is when you see from your perspective you you feel everyone is ethical public see you unethical and both are wrong because in the in the in the in, in the same profession if one there are good people also there are bad people also okay so fantastic somebody so, wants to ask okay, now you can yeah uh, anybody who i want to ask a live question can just raise your hand i will allow uh, ask question and uh, then i will share the um, surprise with you okay kushagra vishwakarma has asked in the chat box we are having nursing home in tier 3 city what would be more beneficial living in tier 1 city and go weekly for tier 3 city surgery or staying in tier 3 city itself and provide better care once again it is a entirely this call has to be taken by you whether you want to stay in tier 1 city or tier 3 city both are actually equally equal equal headaches then you have to have find out which better headache you want to have nursing home you can have tier 3 city you have to think about your children their education and all those things tier 1 city would be better for living and tier 3 city will be better for you want to have a slow paced life and a comfortable life but it is always better to stay in the place where you are actually managing the patients okay so uh, nobody want to ask any question fantastic 